afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased uh, to welcome you today to this event with the IAEA, Protecting Healthcare in Conflict and Seeking Accountability. Uh, great to have you with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, I see some people are still arriving, so maybe I might pause just for maybe another little minute just to just to let everybody in, if that's okay. Um, it's a real honor and a real pleasure uh, for me to 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 uh, be asked to host this this afternoon's session. My name is Jim Clarkin. I'm the CEO of Oxfam Ireland, and I'm also the chair of the European Fundamental Rights Agency. Uh, and as as Oxfam, we have of course been working in Syria since 2013, and have have you know, my colleagues have firsthand experience of what the impact that the conflict has had and continues to have and the devastating impact that is um, for, at, a, at a very human level, as well as you know, trying to understand the, the wider implications. But I'm really, really delighted that today uh, we're joined by Wahad Al-Khatib, and filmmaker and co-founder of Action for Sama, and Hamza Al-Khatib, who's the medical doctor and also co-founder of Action for Sama. And they've been generous enough to join us today. We're, it's such an honor to have you both with us. Uh, shukran Katir, we're so grateful to you. And we're really looking forward to hearing from you shortly. Um, our speakers will have about 20 minutes or so uh, to, to, to speak and to, to, to describe their story, even though uh, if you listen and read their backstory, you could probably spend several hours chatting to them because it's their journey has been fascinating and, and, and very inspiring. And um, just to let everybody know that um, you can join the discussion here using the Q&A function, which is just down below on the Zoom. Uh, you should hopefully see it on your screen. And do feel free to, to send your questions in as we go along. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on them. And we can, you know, as they come to you, and I'll keep an eye on them. And we, we'll, we'll use them at the appropriate time once our speakers have finished. Just also to remind everybody that today's presentation and Q&A are both on the record. Uh, so that's just so that you're aware. And finally, if you would like to tweet about the please do using the handle at IIEA. So now to formally introduce Wahad and Hamza and then hand over to them. So Wahad is the director of uh, Orsama, winner of the BAFTA and nomination for an Academy Award for Best Documentary in which he introduced global audiences to the unimaginable lived experience and reality of civilians and medical personnel under attack in Syria. Hamza is the director, was the director of the last remaining hospital in East Aleppo, Al-Quds, during continued attack by, attacks by the Syrian and Russian regimes. He was responsible for the healthcare of the entire population of the area during the besiegement of the city and the medical evacuation during the forced displacement in 2016. Together, Hamza and Wahid have founded Action for Sama and have since also led the Stop Bombing Hospitals campaign with the aim to shed light on the attacks perpetrated against healthcare facilities, seeking accountability on these crimes and amplifying the voices of healthcare professionals on the ground. And everybody listening here and, and participating in this will be acutely aware that as we speak, these very attacks are happening today. So this is as pertinent now as it has ever been. It's a real honor to welcome you both to the IAEA and to this event. And we really look forward to hearing from you. I think we're going to start with a short video. Thank you very much for this like, kind introduction. We'll start with this video about like the that we, we've done just like less than a week ago uh, on the anniversary of the main attack of the hospital. So our hospital work again was tar like targeted several times. One of the massive attacks was on the 27th of April 2016, uh, which results in death of over uh, like 52 people uh, from the hospital and sort of like the uh, nearby buildings. Uh, and no one, unfortunately, and obviously no one has been held accountable till the moment for, for that attack. Neither the rest, like 600 and over 25 attacks that happened in Syria through the past years. Uh, so it's still like that was part of, of remembering that target and bringing more awareness towards it. So I'll 
just need to figure this out. Yeah. I witnessed too many massacres and did my best to save lives. I started working as a field doctor shortly after graduating, and I was the manager of Al-Quds Hospital in East Aleppo, one of the only nine available to the people under continuous attacks from the regime and Russian violence. <laughs> I tried to ensure our hospital's ability to continue working until our worst nightmare came true. At 9.42 p.m. on the 27th of April 2016, several Russian airstrikes directly targeted our hospital, resulting in widespread destruction. 52 people were killed that night among them patients and colleagues who had worked tirelessly to save every life possible before theirs was so brutally taken. But that was neither the first attack on a hospital nor would be the last. We did not surrender. We equipped a new and bigger hospital in a sheltered place. We knew we would be targeted again, but we couldn't just stop. Providing healthcare services in such circumstances was beyond medicine. It was part of the whole city's resistance. Their aim was to destroy all hopes of life, denying any right to healthcare to people, leaving the wounded alone, without medication nor assistance, till death. But the success of this plan relies on the silence and indifference of the international community, which allows such crimes to be repeated again and again in Homs, Damascus, Dara, Idlib, and last but not least, encouraging Russian warplanes to repeat what they did to Al-Quds Hospital in 2016, beyond Syria's borders today. Not only to those in Syria, but to all people subjected to war crimes and crimes against humanity. To date, not a single person has been held accountable for these atrocities, which seems to be fading in the background as new ones are committed albeit followed by the very same inaction. Stop bombing hospitals is the call to action launched by Action for Summer as a large-scale global campaign since 2019 by bringing first-hand experience of the brutal reality faced by the healthcare sector during conflict. We have been elevating the voices of medical professionals under attack on the ground and have joined forces with colleagues from Syria, Ukraine, Europe and the US to expose such crimes in front of the public everywhere. Targeting hospitals, the places key to human survival, is deliberate and aimed at breaking the people's resistance. Yet, we will never let it go. Tell us more about the actual documentary. We are documenting the story and sharing the knowledge we developed through such a cruel experience in order to resist together and to pressure the international community and governments to take action, hold criminals accountable and stop bombing hospitals. Join us. Thank you all for watching and thank you, Jim, again for, for the kind introduction. And it's it's our honor to be here. And it's our pleasure always uh, to, to speak about what we witnessed and what we're still trying to do right now. Um, I think like just watching something like this, which is just we, we've done last week, as Hamza mentioned, uh, talking about the same crimes that happened and still happening and like thank you so much Jim for like mentioning this very clearly that as we speak this is still happening and people living in, in different areas in Syria around even the world still being to be threatened you know by, by such attacks like this um, and the importance of, of keep telling the story. Um, my part of this uh, was always about documentation and uh, using any tools available in terms of media, in terms of uh, activism, 
to speak out about this, to make more awareness about this. I think one of the um, like kind of surprising question I've I've had since we left Syria, since we were, we survived there, was uh, why the regime is attacking hospitals. And I think the same question was asked even after Ukraine, you know, like why the regime, why Russia is attacking hospitals. And I think that was very fair, but at the same time, you know, like uh, a little bit, I feel like sometimes uh, hard to explain as much as it's very obvious in terms of the um, deliberate targets of uh, healthcare facilities, key uh, centers and key places for, for humanity, as, as we just, Hamza mentioned in the video. Um, and just to understand, you know, what we're facing as people, as a human being, as um, for me, you know, as a mother uh, with two kids now, with one kid at that time, um, you know, trying to navigate my daily life in Aleppo um, and, you know, like just to feel that any sort of life is being under attack, uh, trying people not to resist, uh, not to continue their life, not to uh, defends their their basic rights of of living, um, so I, I think yeah that that question is is very important to to explain um, the Syrian regime supported by their allies, um, Russia, Putin, and their kind of systematic uh, way of of burning everything around around people around around the humans. Um, so healthcare facilities are the main targeted. Same like schools, same bakeries, same. Uh, what we call in Syria, the white helmet, uh, the Syrian civil defense, similar like in Ukraine, the people who run out to help uh, like victims, to help uh, patients, to help people who are under the rebels. Uh, all this kind of attack make people um, had no hope uh, or and have now today even no hope, um, like f feeling that there's no way out there's no uh, mercy and no humanity within this situation. Um, and I, I think, you know, encouraging healthcare workers, um, um, activism, people who are working to help other people to keep going and to document their stories, document what they, uh, their work and what they are doing. Um, this is not just like to face the propaganda that Russia or the Syrian regime were using or still use uh, are still using until today, but also to document and to show uh, the humanity of people. You know what people are capable to do and able to do as individuals, as like single doctors, as we've seen in Al Quds Hospital and other hospitals in Syria, as a huge organization. And Jim, like you, your work in in Oxfam, like you know you, you've been through this a lot. You know, like like documenting, being able to connect with people and show people what you are doing as well. This is all facing uh, and, and would face the, the propaganda that Russia and the Syrian regime uh, uh, is doing. Um, and I think, you know, like what, what um, the Syrian regime, what Russia is doing is more um, like kind of shaping the new world we were living in, which is um, like no rules of, of anything, no rules even of war, no respect for for any uh, human being, for any like red lines toward any kind of like uh, war or conflict or whatever we, we wanna call the situation. And I think that's very dangerous for, for our future as a human being. And in the other way around, what we do as individuals, our, as, uh, as organization, as people who are trying to uh, build and live this alternative life, facing all this kind of crimes and witnesses this, is really like you know facing the rules that we should have, even if it's a war between two countries. Uh, and I'm not referring here to Russia and Ukraine because it's not a war between two two countries. That's that was invasion. But even when it's rules, uh, sorry, even if it's a war between two countries, rules should be respected. People, human beings, civilians, people who are even injured, like soldiers, should be um, under protection, as as we all want as a human being. Um, so every work has been documented is helping, you know, to set the rules that we want to have as a human being who wants freedom, who wants democracy, who wants uh, the basic human rights in, in our lives. Um, through my work in Forsama and making that film and doing more films now and being able to go around the world and show uh, people more about the story, 
um, I felt the importance of, of that, of feeling, of letting peoples around the world to recognize what happened, to learn more about this. Because at some point, I think even us, we felt people knew enough about what happened. Politicians knew enough. But I, I think even, even people who work in Syria for years, they start to be numb. They start to get used to this as numbers. And I think our role and our work as like, you know, re uh, framing and reminding people what what was this this about you know what how this um, small or big change in in these people's lives could really make a difference. Um, I can keep going for a long time, so I will I will uh, finish here and and give it to Hamza to, to continue. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Raj. So, like when when we were living in 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 East Aleppo. And as I was like a just freshly graduated doctor, everything in in that like like world was completely new to us. Like the aid system, how how things worked, how like proposals and then donor reporting and all of that. Same thing regarding like the human like the human rights. Like I guess no one easily come like if you stop anyone off the street and like like what's the like the principles of Geneva Convention or like they will tell you one or two things, but they're not aware of of their rights and 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 the rules. Uh, looking at everything, so I don't want to like repeat some of what Wad said, but looking back now, uh, I guess one of the huge gap in accountability because accountability is a long way. Like we all know, we all know that or acknowledge that, but I guess the gap is in the current situation. So, and I'll talk on two things. So there are several mechanisms to protect healthcare workers, like whether it is like under the UN or under other like uh, umbrellas. And I can't name any of those like mechanisms that really uh, like have any, any element of accountability towards it. I'll give an example like the deconfliction mechanism in Syria where something that the UN came to us as like the local healthcare workers through the NGOs saying that the deconfliction mechanism is basically sharing the locations of the main infrastructure and the main like health facilities uh, with the conflict parties in order to make sure that those uh, facilities are not targeted. Basically the deconfliction ends there. There is no like what if. So what happened is basically after the after getting all those informations, uh, putting us as local health workers into that pressure because we were always like, shall I share this information? And I know that those location will be shared with the Russian and the Syrian regime because they are the the uh, the UN state members. And based on that, I'm making putting my life and patients and the whole staff in risk by sharing the the location with them, or shall I not share the location? And then the hospital might be targeted. And then someone would came and say like, oh, if only you shared the coordinates with the UN, that might have protect the hospital. And since there is no then clear, like what if the hospital what, what was targeted? Like what, what's the route after that deconfliction mechanism? It wasn't, it wasn't clear. And uh, after a couple of years, all the list of those hospitals were shared through the UN mechanism were targeted. And then the UN started like a vague investigation that like, like shyly pointed a little bit responsibility on the Syrian regime and the Russian. And then basically the, the Russian states that just like uh, withdraw from the deconfliction mechanism in 2017 or 18, they just announced, oh, we're no, no, like we're no longer gonna be part of this. And based on that, the deconfliction mechanism has stopped. So, like as a local healthcare worker coming from a third world country, I would expect better from the UN. I would expect better from the think tanks that are in the US, in the UK, in, in Ireland, in Europe, everywhere, that someone should have pointed out that what's the consequences of those locations that we shared clearly with the conflict parties were targeted? What are we going to do next? Uh, and the other thing that I want also to, to, to highlight is like the way the aid system is operating in conflict areas. What is the aid system like, and particularly the in, in healthcare sector is doing to protect the lives of the local healthcare workers. 
in Syria, for example, and also in documenting those attacks, uh, which doesn't violate any like the being like neutral or independent like aspects of, of the humanitarian work. When we were in Syria, I struggled a lot with donors for two things. First one is to obtaining those CCTVs, uh, cameras, in order to, 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 to document what's happening in, in, in the hospital. Most of them and all of them said, no, like we can't. It's not like part of any uh, like award that we are getting. There is no budget line for CCTV, which is fair. But that component of documenting what's happening should be part of, of the protection of healthcare workers, should be part of the do no harm like aspect in implementing healthcare like through, through the aid system. The other thing also, like when we were always trying kind of like we need to get like an underground facility or we need to protect the hospital with the, as simple as sandbags to put them like in, in front of the windows and doors to protect the hospital from pressure of airstrikes. Those requests also like were always met with refused refusal because they would say like this is part of infrastructure and that's not a component of like that we can we can fund we can fund you with salaries we can fund you with like mm -hmm. running cost fuel and all of that while like infrastructure doesn't that, that it's not a component that we can we can fund which which is like kind of strange like looking at at the situation now in Syria or Ukraine when like you can get the fund for a hospital, but no fund for protecting that hospital. Even as simple as, as I said, like sandbags and 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 like that simple kind of engineering work. And when the hospital is targeted, you can give funding for relocation of hospital and buying new equipment and hiring new people instead of the dead. And then also no protection component in that and waiting for that hospital to be attacked again and you can get the fund. So I guess like also the aid system, like we all acknowledge, I guess everyone in the on this. In this like panel and call out and like on Zoom, like I, like we know that hospitals are being targeted. We know that it's a long way for accountability. And my the point that I want to make is what is through this route until we get to the accountability and until like the day we know like what that everyone knows targeting a healthcare facility has a huge consequences and no one would dare to do that. What are we doing in between? What are we doing in helping the local healthcare workers? Uh, for getting like protection and for getting like a decent documentation of their sacrifices, like when someone is dead or when when like a hospital is targeted and patients are killed, like at least to have that independent uh, like documentation of it. And as for example, like the CCTV, because we were always putting ourselves like when now like health local healthcare workers talking from Ukraine. The 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 Russian and the, the the huge propaganda they have will always make like oh they're talking because like they are like influenced by the Ukraine like government because uh, they are like we're using those like they will always like put you in that you are on one side of the conflict you can't really talk your opinion it, like is biased same thing in Syria like when we're talking about advocacy you say like hey you're supporting terrorist groups so we're not we don't care of uh of, of like listening to you while if something came from like any huge large like international organization stating that like this is the hospital we were like funding and this is the cctv that we know were in the independently like independently installed and we have access through like the 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 ip cameras like we know that they are not manipulated and here's the documentation for anyone to use it that's that's part of the independent independency and neutrality in providing also the, the, the aid assistance from my point of view. And uh, yeah, that's almost half an hour from our side. <laughs>